The British Army's armored tanks are about to get a major upgrade. In February 2024, the world got its first glimpse of the Challenger 3 at the International Armored Vehicles Conference in London. This was far from a ceremonial debut. In just four days, the prototype embarked on a critical journey to Germany for a series of grueling trials. Now, in May 2024, live fire testing is underway, marking a key step towards the Challenger 3's deployment with the British Army. At first glance, Germany's involvement in the Challenger 3 trials might raise eyebrows. The UK boasts expansive training grounds seemingly perfect for testing armored vehicles. However, a closer look reveals a specific reason behind this strategic decision. James Cartledge, the Minister of State for the Ministry of Defense, sheds light on the unique role Germany plays. While the majority of testing, including firing trials with standard NATO ammunition, will occur within the UK's familiar territory, Germany offers a crucial element absent elsewhere, the ability to safely evaluate a specific ammunition type. The key to the Challenger 3's firepower lies in its versatility. Designed to be a true multi-tool, it can handle both standard NATO rounds and specialized ammunition developed by Rheinmetall. However, there's a catch. Clearing these specialized rounds for use on UK ranges is a costly and time-consuming process. For this initial limited testing phase, it simply would not be practical. This is where Germany steps in as the perfect host. With its established facilities and presumably experience handling such specialized ammunition, Germany provides the ideal proving ground for the Challenger 3 to demonstrate its full range of firepower. In simpler terms, Germany acts as a specialized testing arena, ensuring the Challenger 3 can seamlessly integrate this unique ammunition into its arsenal. So, how much of an upgrade is the Challenger 3? What new features does it bring to the fight, and how does it stack up against the Challenger 2? Before diving into the capabilities of the Challenger 3, let's rewind and explore the history of its predecessor, the Challenger tank. For over four decades, the Challenger tank has been a bruiser on the battlefield, a symbol of British armored dominance. Rising from the ashes of its predecessor, the Chieftain, the Challenger 1 was initially designed to fulfill an Iranian order for a tougher tank. Nicknamed Chabam after its proving grounds, it boasted a revolutionary armor recipe that laughed off the threats of its day. This resilience shone brightly during the 1991 Gulf War, where British challengers waltzed across the desert, dominating Iraqi T-Series tanks and earning a reputation for near invulnerability. However, the march of progress never sleeps. The Challenger 1 eventually gave way to the Challenger 2, a more potent and versatile iteration introduced in the late 1990s. The 2003 invasion of Iraq became the Challenger 2's proving ground. Much like its predecessor, it carved a destructive path through Iraqi armor, remarkably sustaining no losses to enemy fire throughout the entire conflict. Now fast forward to 2024, the war in Ukraine throws a stark light on reality. Armored warfare is a never-ending arms race. Just like a game of chess, new strategies and anti-tank weaponry appear at a breakneck pace. Even the toughest tanks need constant upgrades to stay ahead. The Challenger 2 has seen upgrades through its service, but Ukraine makes it clear, a bigger jump is needed. This is where the Challenger 3 comes in the next evolution in this legendary line of British armor. The Challenger 3 rumbles onto the scene, not as a revolutionary new tank, but as a substantial upgrade to the venerable Challenger 2. Designed to extend the lifespan of the British Army's main battle tank until at least 2040, the Challenger 3 brings a mix of improvements and considerations, aiming to keep the Challenger relevant in an ever-evolving battlefield. the most significant aspect of the Challenger 3 lies in its firepower. Replacing the Challenger 2's rifled gun is a new Rheinmetall L55A1, 
120mm smoothbore gun. This upgrade is not just about a new barrel, it brings compatibility with NATO ammunition, a crucial benefit for joint operations. However, there's a trade-off. The Challenger 2's depleted uranium DU ammunition, lauded for its superior penetration, is sacrificed. A 2001 UK Parliament report highlights the benefits of DU rounds. They boast 10 to 20% greater penetration power compared to tungsten and are easier to produce. But there is a dark side. DU poses potential health risks, especially for crews of tanks hit by DU rounds. Studies show these situations can lead to concerning levels of uranium in the kidneys and radiation exposure exceeding annual occupational limits. This presents a difficult choice. The smoothbore system offers greater compatibility with NATO allies, but sacrificing DU ammunition means sacrificing a significant edge in penetrating enemy armor. The UK is actively seeking a solution for this, though. A collaboration with Germany on the Enhanced Kinetic Energy Round signifies a focus on regaining that armor-piercing capability with high-velocity tungsten ammunition. Beyond the gun, the Challenger 3 boasts a completely new turret housing the L55A1. This turret upgrade comes with a comprehensive suite of new sensors, significantly enhancing battlefield awareness for crews. This improved situational understanding is vital in modern warfare, allowing for faster target acquisition and better decision-making. The Challenger 2's well-regarded Chobham armor is likely to be retained, but the addition of a modular armor structure under development hints at a future where commanders can adapt the tank's protection level to specific threats. Well, the Challenger 3 clangs onto the scene, not to reinvent the wheel, but to significantly upgrade the trusty Challenger 2. It packs more firepower and keeps crews sharper. But can it bridge the gap left by the retirement of DU ammunition? Will the development of the EKE round be enough to keep the Challenger on top? Drop your thoughts in the comment below and thanks for watching.